what I'm going to try and tell you a little bit about is the sort of mindset that I have about how to actually get myself to sit down and practice, and also the what to do once you're sitting down. Okay. Um, my basic philosophy is that I want to put my brain in a position of being challenged to figure something out. Those moments when, you know, something is really vexing, like, ah, why can't I do this? And your brain is trying so hard to figure out how to make it work, yeah? That, to me, is like the ultimate moment. And I might only have three, four, five of those in a practice session, yeah? But that's what I'm going for, is those moments when I'm freaked out and my brain's trying so hard to do something, yeah? To me, in order to achieve that, we have to make success and failure really evident in our practice. And what I mean is, a lot of times when I'm practicing, I don't really know if I'm doing it right or wrong. Yeah, I don't really know how I look. I don't really know if that's the way it's supposed to sound. And when you're doing that, your brain isn't given all those chances to say, oh, that wasn't right. Oh, man, let me try. Ah, that wasn't it either. You know, to try these different things and then to get it and to try and latch on to them, right? Other, other arts and sports have a, a better time with it. Like, I'm a skateboarder. Skateboarding is great because you fall down and it hurts. And you don't want to fall down and get hurt, so you learn really quickly. Yeah? You try to kick flip, you turn your ankle, you fall down, and your brain goes, damn, that was not it. Right? And then you try the next time, and you land it, and there's that, that whole body sense of relief, and your brain latches on to that series of motions that got you there. Yeah? It's easy to learn skateboarding. It's hard to learn knee on form or something really subtle, right? Ballet. It's hard to learn ballet on your own. That's why we have amazing ballet teachers, because you need someone to make it clear. Yes, no. Does that make sense? So, let's take a particular rhythm, like do, 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 Okay? What are some things, let's say we're, we're working on our form. We want to look like we're more confident in this rhythm. What are some of the things that we can do to make success and failure and obviously, we play with the mirror. And playing with the mirror is one of the most revealing and sort of empowering ways to practice because you get immediate feedback. Everything you're doing, you think you're standing up straight, but you're not. You think you're leaning over too much, but you're not there yet. You think you're bending your elbows, but you're not. All of that stuff is that success and failure training that your brain needs. So practicing with the mirror is fantastic. Also, practicing with a video camera. And you can either have it live, like on a television. Sometimes I'll be practicing with my drumsticks and I'll be watching myself on a video camera in the television just to give myself a different perspective on the way that my body is moving, the way that my hands are working. Or recording yourself and then later watching. Those are all ways to provide kind of clear feedback. There are also ways to sort of magnify the specific challenge of any pattern or any movement or any rhythm that we're working on. Yeah? So if we take peke peke tsukuku ten ten, yeah? What's one of the key difficult moments in that pattern? Okay, where? What what about the suku? Okay, you gotta get the right sound. That's a good one. Okay, so let's say we've decided for ourselves we want to improve the sound of our suku. Right? We want to zoom in on the tuku. What is some way that we can do that as a practicer? And I'll tell you, there's a way that's more effective than just simply doing take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, ten, ten. Take it, take it, take it, take it, ten, ten. Just doing that again and again. If we want to zoom in on that moment, what might we play? Take it, take it. Say it again? Take it, take it. Right. What if we do take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, right? I'm a big believer that if you zoom in on that thing, that transition from open to close, you zoom in on that and you work on that, that's actually harder, because you're doing it again and again and again and again, uh, that's harder than what we need in the actual rhythm, and that's perfect. We want to get our brain focused on this really hard challenge. Maybe we even do tekezuku, we do all these crazy things, these really difficult versions of that rhythm, so that our brain is forced to get all of that coordination. When we come back to tekezuku, now it's easy. Does that make sense? Any questions about this so far? <laughs>